Until now, we've uh, used a representative agent to study our model of Slack. Um, but um, of course, in recent years in macro, there has been a lot of emphasis on inequality and heterogeneity uh, in uh, the macroeconomy. So that's both on the empirical front, there has been a lot of research documenting um, income inequality, wealth inequality, and how you know this type of inequality has uh, changed over time. On the theory front, also there has been a huge um, amount of research on heterogeneous agent Dukensian models, um, trying to study uh, you know the impact of heterogeneity in macro models, how it affects policy, uh, and so on, and trying to um, use all that amount of evidence on inequality that has been unhearsed and uh, to and you know use it to calibrate um, macro models with heterogeneity and see how they behave. Um, so what I want to show you now is that it's very easy to introduce heterogeneity, heterogeneous agents into a matching model. Uh, and so we'll see that it's useful to have a, a setup in which you have heterogeneity and in addition it's also useful to move away a little bit from representative agent to see um, you know how the model works really to separate a bit between individual decision individual variables and aggregate variables and so you can also gain from some insight from that heterogeneous agent setup um, so um, let's see how you can introduce like basic heterogeneity in the model so we'll develop um, an uh, heterogeneous agent matching model, which we can call HAM. So uh, what, what type of heterogeneity can you introduce? So we can do two things. So first, uh, we can introduce heterogeneity in wealth. Um, so So how can we do that? Well, here, do you remember it's a static model? All households start with an endowment of money or wealth. And so what we can do is that we can let all households start with a different endowment of money and wealth to, ca to capture uh, wealth inequality. So here we'll assume that each household that will denote I Start with and amount of money mu i. Um, so that allows us to capture wealth inequality. And of course, um, we'll assume that the aggregate endowment is equal to uh, a total stock of money mu as we had done earlier. So the sum over all household of the mu i is equal to mu, which is the aggregate endowment of money in the economy. Um, so we can have that. In addition, it's also we can also assume that all households have different um, capacity. So all households uh, are going to bring a different amount of services to the market. So each household I um, uh, 
provides ki services to the market and of course you know not all of these are going to be sold so what do we capture here so that can be a, a whole um, a whole set of factors that would um, have, uh, make different households have different productive capacity uh, captures uh, inequality in capital uh, holding so you know if different households hold different amount of capital uh, you know then you know uh, they won't be able to produce the same amount of stuff that could be also so capital i mean like actual capital machines uh, you know uh, buildings stuff like that uh, it could be also inequality in human capital if different households have different human capital, different education, different amount of expertise, um, then of course they'll be able to produce different amount of services or services that are more or less valuable. It could also be, uh, you know, heterogeneity in social capital. You know, if people have more knowledge or more connected, um, essentially they'll also be able to produce different amount of services. Uh, it could be. Um, inequality or heterogeneity in like taste for work. Um, if some households like to work more or have a culture of working more than other households, then of course they are going to be, say their shop will be open longer hours and they are going to provide more services uh, to the market. So these are all the things that can be uh, captured with this heterogeneous capacity. Uh, so the last one is basically heterogeneity in labor supply. Uh, nevertheless, once we aggregate all the capacities, we we'll assume that we have the same aggregate capacities as before, where the sum of all the KIs is going to be equal uh, to K. So this is the heterogeneity that we can uh, bring in. And now, you know, with that, so it, it captures really a whole set of things. That, uh, that we think really matters, um, you know, at you know, endowment of initial wealth, um, so wealth inequality, which we think matter a lot. And in a sense, we'll see that uh, the fact that different households provide a different amount of services because they have different human capital, uh, you know, different expertise, uh, will then lead to actually uh, income inequality because if you provide more services, you'll be able to sell more of them and so you'll have different income. So here actually with these two simple assumptions, we capture both wealth inequality and income inequality. We can have households that are wealthier than others and some others that have more income than others. These things are not necessarily correlated and we can see what happens. Uh, human capital, so here, I guess we could have added expertise, uh, but this key thing is that this is going to generate income inequality. So here we have both wealth inequality and income inequality in this simple setup. <laughs> 